doing the uh, live web chat. Uh, I'm Dave Haley from Psychroptic. Hopefully you can hear and see me. Uh, I've got a few questions here that uh, have been submitted by uh, some of you around the world. Just have a look here. So, question number one. What was my first ever drum kit? Um, well, I got my first kit when I was, uh, I think I was 13. Um, I begged and pleaded with my parents for quite a long time until um, they actually let me um, get, a, get a kit and bring it into the house. So the first kit was a Pearl Max Wing um, from the yeah, kit from the 60s. Uh, it was pretty beat up condition, but uh, at the time I got it, it was the best thing, best thing in the world for me. Um, yeah, I wish I still had it. I, I sold it so I could buy my next kit. But um, yeah, first ever kit was a, a Pearl, and um, I'm thankful enough to be actually endorsed by it all these days, so it's a very cool thing. Um, I've got another question here, another drumming related question. Uh, it is, what pedals did I use for the Acasis album from the Amenta and the Ruins albums Adam and Time and Spun Forth and Dark Nets? Uh, for those three albums, <coughs> um, remember correctly I used the Pearl Eliminator pedals. I hadn't yet switched over to the Axis pedals, which I use now and have done for the last few years, but um, those three albums were Pearl Eliminators. Uh, still an awesome pedal, I still, when I get the chance, I still use them today. is another drumming related one uh, what is a good exercise to do to eliminate shin muscle burn while attempting fast double kick uh, the simple answer is there isn't any um, the burn is just part of it um, learn to love it learn to love the burn um, what you can do to eliminate it somewhat is uh, ensure that you're completely relaxed at all times. Uh, it's a bit of a contradiction playing this sort of style of music um, and trying to uh, keep relaxed. Um, but yeah, you just have to find a, a happy medium, I guess. Um, but the burn is just part of it. With anything, you know, you, you don't get anything for nothing. So put the effort in and uh, you don't just suffer. Suffer through it. Um, another drumming related question here is Do I ever experience forearm ten uh, tendon soreness from blasting so much? Um, not really, no. Uh, there has been some points um, where I have suffered um, both tendonitis and uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, that, when it occurred, uh, it was right before it was, so I was kind of freaking out a little bit. I'd never um, never had any of the conditions before, and I didn't really know much about them. Um, so I thought, this is it, I can't do it anymore. Um, but I went to the doctor, and she was very, very kind, very helpful, and very uh, informative. Um, she explained to me that the condition was both carpal tunnel and tendonitis were reversible and they were in early stages um, with, uh, with myself. So um, she, uh, 
she she basically got me to go through what I've been doing differently and uh, what all the potential causes of the condition were. So she obviously knew I was a drummer, and um, so we we eliminated that. Well, I've been doing it for years, so that wasn't the uh, that wasn't the case. Um, so we kind of narrowed it down to it was actually uh, a change in drumstick. I changed my drumstick size just just prior, and um, I was doing a fair amount of uh, computer work and graphic design at that stage. So I was doing lots of little mouse moves. So it was a combination of those two things, um, as well as uh, an increase in the rehearsal due to the fact that we were going on tour that were the contributing factors for it. So first thing I did was change the drums to the back and um, I minimised my computer use uh, just at the bare minimum. Um, and yeah, it, it took care of the problem. It took a couple of weeks for it to subside but um, while we were actually on tour it, um, it went away from its own accord. So they're just two, a couple of things I keep in mind, you know, um, to prevent it from happening in the future. Okay, so I've got uh, a few more questions here. Uh, got one here. Uh, are we going to tour Mexico anytime soon? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. If there's some promoters out there that can... Uh, bring us there, we'll be there. Um, I had the good fortune of travelling there early, uh, mid last year. Uh, beautiful country. Um, I can't wait to go back. So Just uh, hassle, hassle your local promoters to get us over there. And we'll get there. Um, some more questions here. Uh, Have I got any funny stories from being on tour? Um, well, it's always a f it's always a fun time. It's, uh, it's it's difficult to pinpoint one particular story because yeah, things happen all the time. It's, uh, and we always get asked, "Tell us some funny stories from the road." And um, yeah, nothing ever springs to mind. So. I will have to write a few down, so next time people ask, I can, uh, uh, yeah, bust out a cool story rather than just being boring and lame and saying that we, uh, we don't have any. Um, some more questions uh, from Logan. When do you guys plan on doing another US tour? Um, hopefully later this year. Uh, it's just down to scheduling, basically, um, and when we can fit it all in. Um, so, uh, we love touring over there, um, but uh, yeah, we all still work our, our day jobs and um, uh, it, it does make it a little bit uh, challenging to fit in all the touring and uh, working and family commitments, but we do it as much as we can all more than we really should but um, we definitely will try to get back over there this year at some point um, I've got uh, questions one question here from uh, Leonardo asking what uh, my favourite metal albums of 2011 were um, I was a little bit out of the loop last year to be honest um, I, was, I guess I went through a bit of a old school retro year and just listening to a lot of the old classics but um, I did really love the uh, new Silosis album that was a killer album um, uh, really like Norwegian band Kvel Attack. I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it but uh, they're, they're an awesome band um, 
and the new promo tracks from uh, the guys from Discount Hat in the UK, um, they were killer. So I can't wait for can't wait for that one. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the new Goat Whore album coming out. That'll be killer. Um, yeah, oh, and I really did like the uh, the latest uh, Immolation EP. I think that was uh, that's definitely their best work yet, and um, I really really enjoy the new direction um, they're going in. Um, and Absu, they put out an excellent album. Uh, that was a killer release. Um, so yeah, there was there was a ton of really good stuff, um, but I'm still you know still picking through it all. Um, every time I uh, see see something that I need to get in the music store and make sure I go and pick it up. Um, okay, I've got some more questions here. Kelly just said, you can't not like immolation, and that's correct. Okay, I've got one from Raphael. Uh, besides metal, what type of music do I like? Um, I'm just a music fan in general. Anything that gives me that the tingle in the spine or gives me goosebumps, I'll listen to. Um, but it's predominantly metal that gives me that feeling. So that's that would be my main genre I listen to. But yeah, I, I, I like uh, a lot of ambient music, um, jazz. Fusion, funk, uh, rock, progressive, anything that's cool, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to. So, I'll, I'm a huge ACDC fan, um, I listen to them almost every day. Um, I really like uh, a lot of the Dead Can Dance material. Um, bands like Ulva, um, uh, Pimentola. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Um, my iPod looks like it's a little bit schizophrenic, to be honest. Um, got to ask, what about Mexican beer? Coronas? Uh, no, Tecate. That's that's what I drink. It's a good beer. Can I say James Lagrange? No, I can't. Um, another question here. Who's my idol drummer? Um, well, there's a couple of guys that are in the scene at the moment that um, I really admire, look up to and aspire to. Um, guys such as George Goliath. Um, he's, I'm fortunate enough to be quite good friends with George. Um, he's one of the most inspirational drummers um, that the metal genre has ever seen. Um, his talents are unsurpassed his dedication passion to the instrument yeah second to none so he's he's a big uh, I'd say yeah I do look up to George a lot and he has uh, he has helped me a lot over the years uh, another one is Derek Derek Roddy um, another fantastic drummer um, really pushing um, the extreme metal realms um, and incorporating other styles within to create uh, a very unique uh, take on extreme metal playing. Um, <coughs> awesome guy as well, uh, and very inspirational and motivational, motivational character. Um, other drummers that I'm really digging these days are players like Benny Grab, um, uh, Jojo Mayer, uh, Johnny Rab, and then you've got your old. Uh, Classic session guys such as Dave Weckl, Dennis Chambers, Virgil Donati, um, the usual characters. Uh, but um, I'll, every time I see a drummer, it doesn't matter who they are or you know, how good they are, um, I'm inspired by them. So, um, and I learn from everyone. You know? um, the, the young kid playing his first gig um, that plays a unique feel, you know. I'm inspired by it. It's like, wow, okay, that's really cool. I'm going to steal that. So, um, I take inspiration for, for 
from wherever I can. But, uh, yeah. Oh, and I can't not mention Gene Hoagland, <coughs> Sean Reinhardt, just because they're, uh, amazing players as well. Um, okay, so I've got more questions here. Uh, how did I get into metal? And what were my early inspirations? Well, um, <coughs> I got into metal, I guess, kind of accidentally. I fell into it. Um, I just remember when I was a kid, about eight years old, seven, eight years old, seeing um, uh, the older dudes, you know, in, in the city wearing um, you know, their denim shirts and uh, denim denim jackets and denim vests where, with, uh, you know, these crazy pictures on them, uh, back patches from Metallica and Slayer and things like that. And um, one day um, I saved up my money convinced my mum to let me buy Metallica's Ride the Lightning. Um, I think I was about eight at the time, eight or nine. Um, so the first thing she did was take it off me. She read all the lyrics. Uh, there wasn't any naughty words in there, so she gave it back to me. And um, after pressing play on that album, uh, yeah, life has been different ever since. Um, life changing, life changing. And I, I loved it so much, I just assumed that everyone listened to this style of music. Um, so I was in, I lived in a country town with not many, I didn't really have anyone else that uh, I could listen to music with. So um, I just started to uh, buy you know, more Metallica albums. Um, and I got into other bands like Motley Crue and Slayer. <coughs> then a little bit later, bands like Pantera and, uh, and so forth. Um, it wasn't until I was about 14 or 15, I came across uh, some of the, the classic death metal bands from Australia, such as uh, A Bremelin. Um, I bought their, their self-titled CD when it came out, because um, I heard a song on the radio and it just blew my mind. I was like, this is, this is the heaviest thing ever. Uh, but still to this day they weren't my favourite band um, so yeah after after progressing from uh, the thrash and the speed metal I got into the, the death and the black metal sort of stuff with uh, mainly Australian bands at first so, uh, like Blood Duster, Damage, Bremelin, uh, Manticore, Crypt um, and then later into black metal and things like that so yeah my, my taste is uh, ever expanding, but um, I guess in my teen years, that's when um, that's when I was exposed to the most styles of metal. I guess that set uh, set me on the path that I'm on now. Uh, let's have a look at some more questions that have come through. Uh, Australian metal is absolutely killing it right now. Who else is catching your attention right now? Um, yeah, there's some awesome bands in Australia. Uh, one band that really blew me away uh, that I saw on the weekend was Order of Arias, uh, an excellent Melbourne black metal band. Um, then there's bands such as uh, The Mentor from Sydney, they're, they're a killer band. Um, I, I was a former member, but um, just due to time constraints, I can't play with them anymore. Um, but they're an excellent band. Um, and then bands. Uh, well, I have to plug Ruins. That's uh, a black metal band that I play in. Um, then we've got bands like uh, Erebus and Throne, an excellent black metal band from Sydney. Of course, there's Nazul. Um, uh, there's some great up-and-coming Melbourne bands. Um, the Mung, they're a, they're a great band. Um, bands like The Day Everything Became Nothing, Fuck them dead. They're all killer bands. So there's there's a lot of great stuff um, for those that, who are outside of Australia. Um, yeah, check out check out Australia, the Australian scene. It's really it's really happening at the moment. Um, I've got a question here from Mike. Uh, are, are we going to play the Summer Slaughter again? Um, if we get an offer. 
um, yeah, we'd probably do it. It was a killer tour last time we did it. Um, so it's just a matter of the offers coming in, you know. If, if we can do it and manage it, we will definitely do it, you know. So that, that was probably my favourite US tour we've ever done for someone for it. So, yeah, just hassle the promoters and maybe we'll be on it this year or next year. Uh, Josh wants to know what day jobs we have. Um, our, okay. <laughs> Joe is a guitar teacher slash uh, engineer. Um, so he uh, teaches guitar a few days a week and records bands. Cameron is an electrician. Uh, Jason is a commercial painter. And myself, um, I'm a drum teacher and um, I generally dabble in other business related, uh, other music business related uh, uh, areas, I guess. Um, I help bands, uh, <coughs> other bands out with uh, administrative um, areas. Uh, helping print merchandise, uh, CDs, that sort of thing. So, in the band, I'm probably the one who is primarily making my living from music. But uh, on the flip side, I'm the poorest in the band. But that, that's just me. I can, I can work from home. Um, okay, so we've got some new questions coming in. What's it like working with Nuclear Bars? Awesome. Uh, best label on it. Um, since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be signed to Nuclear Bars. Um, never thought it would be possible, but uh, yeah, yeah, killer label. Everyone there is super professional. Uh, they're very supportive. Um, and yeah, I haven't got a bad word to say about anyone from, uh, from Nuclear Bars. So, Definitely support the label. Um, don't just download every new release that comes out. Make sure you support the labels that are supporting the band. Um, get out there and you know spend the, the ten bucks to buy the album, or, you know, buy the t-shirt. Um, because uh, without labels such as Nuclear Blast, smaller bands like ourselves wouldn't be. Uh, I wouldn't be able to sit here and talk to you guys now. So it's uh, it, it's a two-way street. Don't just think music is free. Um, yeah, do support the labels that are supporting you guys. Um, I've got a question here regarding the, uh, the session job that uh, I just did recently, which is playing on the new Ask Breed album. Um, the recordings went quite smooth the album. Um, drums were finished in two days. Um, I'm never 100% satisfied with anything I do. There's always stuff that I can do better. But yes, I'm, I'm quite happy with uh, how it all came out. Um, very, very technical album. I haven't... Yeah, it was very hard to learn because the music is uh, not, not at all straightforward. There was a lot of different time changes tempo changes um, and I was uh, focusing on still making it technical but still making it groove at the same time um, so yeah hard album but um, yeah satisfied with it so I, I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing the final result um, okay is Blood Duster releasing an EP this year um, who knows who knows? Uh, I finished recording drums for a full potential full-length album uh, midway through last year, but uh, Blood Dust is a beast of itself, so we will uh, wait and see. Um, I'm one of the biggest Blood Dust fans there are, so I'm, I'm eagerly awaiting what's, uh, what's going to happen as well. 
would I form a satanic funk band with Charles called Jesus Has No Soul? Maybe if I liked it. Who knows? Uh, Logan asked, what was the first death metal album I ever heard and got into? Uh, yeah, that was the self-titled Abremelin album. Uh, Australian, Australian band. Um, if you can find it, track it down again. It was released in 1995. Um, and it still holds its own today. Uh, it's just a brutal, a killer album. Um, uh, Mike wants to know, could I check out his videos and give him some feedback if I get a chance? I'll try my hardest, Mike. I'm pretty busy at the moment. If I get, if I get spare five minutes, I will, uh, I'll definitely check it out. Another question here. I was, uh, am I doing the drums for the, the new disavow? Uh, no, no. That's uh, first time I've heard of that. Um, I know the disavow guys kill a band, um, but I haven't been asked to do the drums. Um, but uh, yeah, the last album was uh, performed by Roman. Now plays the next charges. Um, so track. If you haven't heard of this now, you want to hear some amazing and uh, genre pushing extreme death metal drumming. Check out the latest this about our uh, Roman on it. It's killer. Um, another question here. Did you and your brother develop your musical taste skills in your respective instruments? same time. Um, yeah, we did both start learning instruments at the same time. Uh, I guess I kind of forced Joe to pick up guitar when I got my first drum kit. Um, I actually went out and bought him some Metallica tab books and I said, well, you're playing guitar so you got to learn these songs. Um, so yeah, I kind of, the older brother, a bit, yeah, I guess, uh, stood over him a bit so I could have someone to jam with um, and uh, luckily he, he was into it and uh, we're still jamming now. Um, Joe's tastes are probably even more uh, wide and eclectic um, as opposed to mine. Um, he's a very good fan of uh, 80s progressive music rock music. Um, he's, he's actually got a cover band that he, he plays in uh, called Montage. Uh, he actually plays drums in the band and they're just an 80s tribute band that um, performs all the classics, all the hits from the 80s. Um, I've yet to see them play live, but all reports, uh, they're, they're pretty kick out. So, I sit more in the metal realm and Joe sits more in the, the rock realm, so I guess that uh, that helps give Psychroptic a little bit of a different feel. Um, if we were both into exactly the same music, um, we'd probably just be a blind band and play you know, just standard, standard music rather than uh, bring in some uh, different and uh, exciting elements. You'll have to excuse me, it's exceptionally hot here at the moment. I think it's at last, at last check it was, uh, about, uh, about 30 degrees. Yeah, about 34 degrees at the moment. Um, so, for, uh, everyone in, uh, Fahrenheit, I guess that's around. 95 to 100. It's, it's hot. It's hot. Okay, I've uh, got some more questions here. Um, I saw the Joe's in a project, uh, Sarnesis Absorption. Do you know how they're going to be doing the recordings? Um, I have no idea. That's a, that's a question for Joe. I don't think he, he knows. 
Um, how, how old was I when I got my nose piercing? I was... Must have been 28, I guess. Um, it was on tour, I actually got it in Canada, because I had grown it quite a large beard and then uh, shaved it off. Well, styled it into a, uh, a pirate looking moustache. Um, so I thought, well, I might as well go the whole hog and uh, get the, uh, the nose ring to complete the pirate look. And uh, I've, I've just kept, kept it ever since. Um, question here what's the meaning of your band's name? Uh, Psychroptic doesn't mean anything at all. It was, uh, it was actually created by a friend of the band uh, when we first started. We couldn't come up with a name. So, uh, yeah, it was a friend of a friend. He's like, oh, metal names are easy. Uh, I can come up with on, on the spot. Psychroptic. And uh, at first we laughed. We go, yeah, that's cool. And it kind of stuck. It's like, well, we can't come up with anything. It does sound kind of cool and a bit different, so yeah, psychotic it is. Um, and yeah, well, of course, the name has stuck ever since because it is our band name. Um, and I don't know where that, uh, where the character is that uh, came up with the name. Uh, last I heard, about 10 years ago, he was admitted into a mental asylum, so hopefully. He's out there somewhere and still, uh, still well, um, and not not in the uh, asylum. Uh, favorite genre outside of heavy metal? Uh, I'd say rock. Yeah, classic rock. Um, yeah, ACDC, uh, Motley Crue, uh, all that sort of stuff. Turbo Negro, I love Turbo Negro, yeah. awesome band. Um, and then, you know, your old classic stuff, uh, Black Sabbath. But, well, I guess they, they fit into the heavy metal realm. Um, and, uh, yeah, ambient and atmospheric stuff. Um, got a hello there from uh, Ian from Sick Drummer Magazine. Hi, Ian. If, uh, if anyone hasn't checked out Sick Drum Mag, do please check it out. It's w words cannot explain the uh, how excellent a publication it is. Um, and definitely support the guys from Sick Drum Mag. They're doing great stuff. Um, get yourself a, a, a subscription to it. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's probably one of my favourite magazines that are kicking around now. So. Support the guys. Support the guys. They're doing excellent stuff um, for for uh, the heavier side of um, playing, the more extreme uh, drummers and musicians. Uh, okay, so I've got a few more questions here. Jackson says that's a badass picture on my wall. Yep, that's uh, my uh, lovely girlfriend um, organised it for me for my birthday. Uh, she uh, sneakily uh, did it behind my back, and um, yeah, it was an awesome surprise. Um, and I'm very, very thankful for it. Uh, what will be more important, drum set or my girlfriend? Uh, I'm going to say both at the same time, and that's all I'm going to say. Uh, just Joe demo songs with a drum machine first, or we, do we just jam them out? Um, he Joe demo songs with a click track, um, so I've got tempos to play along with um, and to work stuff out. So he might have certain drum beats in mind. Um, he'll. I just do whatever I feel is going to fit the song, but um, 
when we get together and I play my part through that I've come up with, Joe might say, oh, you know, maybe we try something different here, or, or I had this beat uh, specifically in mind for this riff. So we'll come to a compromise, but every every song's different in the way we write it. Um, Joe might say, okay, this song's got to be this way all the way through, or he might not have any idea what he wants to do with the riffs. So, yeah, we learn we learn riffs and sections, and then we get together and jam it, and um, and, and then put the structure together. But uh, we don't really have a set formula um, because we want to keep changing, keep evolving, and doing things different. Um, no one wants to hear the same album over and over again. So that's why changing up the songwriting, um, changing up the sounds, uh, changing up the the approach to playing, um, that's always very important to us. Uh, Josh wants to know who designed the band logo, who does the album art. Um, Joe designed the logo uh, back all those years ago. Um, and yeah, it's been the same ever since. Um, we've We've toyed with the idea of experimenting and maybe changing it up, um, you know, keeping keeping two logos, um, which is something we might do. Um, artistically, we like to change things up as well. Um, we, uh, we try to use different artists every album, uh, just just to keep it fresh and exciting for us. Uh, artists we've used, um, Colin Marks from the UK did. The upcoming album artwork. Uh, and we've used Raymond Swanland, um, he did Observant, uh, Pyro Olufsen did uh, Symbols of Failure Art, and um, a local hobo artist, um, Bill Dean, did uh, the first, uh, two, first two albums. Uh, and we have also used um, a Greek artist, Seth. He did our live DVD artwork uh, for the initiation uh, release. Um, more. Here. Ben wants to know if I was part of an all star band, who would my ideal bandmates be? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'd probably pick all the members so I didn't actually have to play drums. I could just watch. Um, that would be that would be a very cool band. Uh, I'd, if I was doing that, I'd probably pick. Um, I'd pick for drums. It'd have to be either Gene Hoglan or Kevin Talley. Um, who else would be in it? Uh, bass player would be um, probably someone like Joe Payne or Jason Netherton. Um, guitar, well, I'd probably, probably get Joe on guitar because um, he's got a pretty unique riffing style. And vocals, um, I'd probably get um, Jamie, uh, who used to sing in Damaged, um, who's an exceptional vocalist. Um, and yeah, I'd, I would be the uh, the merchandiser for that band, so I could watch the band every night. Um, I guess if I had to play in the band, I would, but I'd prefer to watch it. Can I say hello, Hector? Yes, I can. Hello, Hector. Got some more questions coming in. Um, how come we didn't choose Logan Matter to mix and master the album? Um, well, Logan did a great job on the last album, but um, I guess we really wanted to give Joe a chance to um, showcase his 
engineering, mixing skills. Um, and I think he, we've got the best sounding record we've, we've ever had. Um, so it's, yeah, we were giving Joe, giving Joe a chance to get out there because um, he does record band. Uh, I guess he does want to go down that avenue and record more bands in the future and mix more bands. Um, so it's, in that way, it's a, a good adver advertisement for, for him. Uh, added to the fact it's a bit more logistically, it made things a lot easier for us to mix the album with Joe doing it. Uh, and we could do multiple mixes and get it to the point where we're super happy with, with the result. Um, and that's a little bit difficult with external mixes. Um, you know, because we're here in Australia, we can't really afford to fly overseas and mix with anyone else. Um, so they're the, they're the two key reasons. And yeah, when the album comes out, check it out. Um, you won't be disappointed with the, uh, with the sound quality on it. It's, uh, yeah, it's world class. So Joe did an awesome job. Uh, did Raymond Swanland do the artwork for the new record? No, that was uh, UK artist Colin Marks. Um, he's got some great stuff, great stuff. Fuzz wants to know, how do I feel about the Stop Online Piracy Act and how do I feel about sharing? Um, I think the Act is wrong. It's n not, not the way to do things and it's being driven by larger corporations. Um, don't get me started on a political rant because that's, no one wants to hear that. Uh, I've got my own opinion. As does everyone else, and I'm not going to force mine down people's throats. But uh, I think the act in itself is wrong, and it's been promoted in uh, well, it's been undertaken in a uh, very underhanded and uh, controlling manner. Um, how do I feel about sharing? Well, um, at the end of the day, I think the main thing is music, getting the music out there. Um, and if people can't afford to, to buy it or give bands some sort of contribution, then yeah, well, it, it has to be. You know, it's a, it's a grey area. Um, part of me says sharing is the best thing in the world, uh, and then another part of me is like, well, if you don't pay for certain elements of the music or support the bands or, or buy merchandise in some way uh, it, it's very difficult for bands to um, to survive um, and labels you know labels such as Nuclear Bars to constantly release awesome uh, albums um, and they're all about the fans so I guess I guess there's there's got to be a little bit of leeway don't um don't download every single album, you know. Um, support the artists in some way. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's. I, I think there are there has to be a better system. So sharing can still occur, um, and artists um, and labels can still sustain themselves. I don't know whether that's. Um, Paying a, a surcharge for for your ISP uh, ISP, sorry, for your, for your internet, um, whether you you know pay a subscription service of uh, a few dollars a month, and then royalties are passed on to uh, the bands and labels. Um, I don't know. There, there, there has to be a better model than uh, than it's occurring at at this point in time. Um, one. I guess one of the the, the, the more positive results with uh, file sharing is um, people have access to a lot more uh, bands and a lot uh, a lot broader styles. So yeah, definitely share. But if you really like something and you want to see the bands 
or the you know the filmmakers or the artists or whatever whatever medium it might be. If you want to if you want them to continue, um, find some way to support them. Um, uh, so yeah, it's it's a grey area. Um, it's, uh, but it, it, I think it needs to be. The next few years will be uh, a turning point for uh, for file sharing. Um, but the, the SOPA Act, no, that's, uh, that's not the way to go. That's that's blatant censorship, and that's that there's more government agendas that are going on than uh, than uh, are being promoted. Um, okay, what is what was the inspiration for the artwork this time? Um, we just wanted a change, wanted something different. Uh, we liked Colin Marks. Uh, we liked his style of uh, artwork and design. Um, so we supplied him with the lyrics of the album and we let him interpret, it, interpret them um, how he saw fit. Uh, it's, uh, it is it's very different from um, our previous releases, but uh, it's a good thing. Uh, we did want to I guess a more sparse uh, cover with a bit more white space, um, so it was a little bit more striking. So um, yeah, we're very very happy with uh, what Colin came up for. Uh, came up with. Um, I actually just received. I'll, I'll go and grab it so you can. I'll show show everyone. This is the. Uh, I received this uh, five minutes. Before I started the web chat, uh, this is the the Australian version of the uh, of the album. It's a little bit a little bit different. Uh, it comes in a nice digi pack with the uh, CD and DVD. So we'll have uh, this will be you'll be able to order this directly from us. So we'll be we'll be sending this one out. Um, this is a, a limited edition release. So. Um, stay tuned on our website for that and on Facebook. But um, you can pre-order the album directly from Nuclear Blast. Um, there's links on the Facebook and on their website, and it will definitely be a lot cheaper than uh, the limited edition. Um, but uh, go and pre-order it now, and, uh, so be the first to hear it on the blog. Be, be, be the cool kids. Be the cool kids. Because we definitely are. Uh, will the new stuff be released on vinyl? Um, good question. Uh, potentially. Uh, I hope so, because I like vinyl. Uh, we will uh, just wait and see what uh, what offers come through. Uh, vinyl is very, very expensive to, to produce. Um, so it's definitely a love thing. Um, it's something that we, we want to do. Uh, we just have to get the right offer for it, I guess. We've got a few new questions coming in. Um, okay. How do I come up with the lyrics? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I watch a lot of sci-fi uh, movies and TV shows. I read a lot of different sorts of books. Um, uh, just watch, yeah, and I love watching documentaries. So uh, I might pick a certain idea, theme, or something a little bit crazy and out outlandish, um, and uh, yeah, just write write a few lines here and there. Um, I, I never sit down and write a whole set of lyrics in one go. Uh, they might take me a few months or even years to write because uh, I'll just write a line here and there, um, go back over it, delete lines. Um, I'll, I'll show my girlfriend to uh, make sure my grammar is correct um, and that sort of thing. Um, so it takes a little while for the lyrics to come together. Um, Jason actually wrote half the lyrics on new album, uh, which is the first time he's written lyrics, and they turned out great, um, 
so I'm not sure what his inspirations were. Um, I haven't really asked him what his lyrics are about because, uh, because I guess it's more about the interpretation rather than uh, being told. So people are free to interpret my lyrics however they like or Jason's lyrics however they like and give give them their own meaning. Um, it, it makes it a little bit more personalised. Um, and uh, I guess that entitles uh, you guys as the listeners to uh, take ownership of, of the lyrics. Um, so whatever you think they mean and interpret them to mean, then uh, that's correct. Uh, do I prefer touring the Europe or the Americas? Uh, Probably, I don't want to offend anyone, but the conditions in Europe are a lot better in terms of uh, being looked after by uh, venues and uh, promoters and that sort of thing. So, just due to the, the logistics of it and um, not going through all the headaches, um, touring, I prefer to tour Europe. Uh, and Europe is is a lot different from Australia. Um, America, or well North America, is um, very similar to Australia. Um, so I, I, I kind of like the the difference. Uh, getting out of my comfort zone in Europe. So uh, that's not to say we don't like touring America, but um, touring America is a, a lot rougher than going out in Europe. Um, in Europe. Uh, go out on the, on a nightliner, so we sleep on the bus. We've got our bunks, but uh, in the in the US, we're we're in a van. We sleep in the van, and uh, after six weeks, it's uh, a little bit uncomfortable. So I'd, I'd say just just from uh, from a comfort level, Europe is is where I prefer. Um, but North American and Canadian audiences are, uh, are maniacs. They're, they're great, so it's uh, it's the balance. You know? um, most dr- another question. Most drums are quantized and completely unreal. How do I feel about this? Uh, how do I feel about it if drums can't execute it live? Well, I'm in two minds about it. I don't. Uh, like to do any of the quantizing, pro tooling, any of that sort of stuff, because I want it to sound natural and organic. Um, so, and, and you know, I'd like to be able to replicate everything exactly the same live, or better live than uh, in the studio. Um, when I see drummers that um, can't execute what they have recorded on the album. Um, Part of me is a little bit disappointed, but another part of me is like, well, the album, um, if, if it sounds awesome on the album, then it's, it's more about the artistic creativity. Um, the drums become more of a, uh, uh, a, a manip- manipulated sound source, so it can still, you know, I still love some albums that sound really quantized and overproduced, um, <coughs> and it's obvious that drummers probably can't do this, but it's, uh, it's, it's still got its artistic merits, so I'm a firm believer in letting everyone do exactly what they want to do, uh, just as so long as it doesn't impact negatively on anyone else, so if you want to get in there and quantize your drums, by all means, do it, um, but if you want to put in the hard hours and actually be able to play what... Uh, then uh, hats off to you. Uh, more questions. Um, could I possibly email a link where you can pre-order the Australian version? In the next couple of days, you'll be able to pre-order it from psychroptic.com. So just, uh, just keep checking back. I'm, I only got the the stock arrived today, so we're still uh, working out the uh, logistics of everything, but you'll be able to pre-order it, I'd say, later in the week. Um, but you can pre-order the Nuclear Blast version now. 
and uh, um, get in there and do that. Uh, it's probably, for those in North America, um, it's, it will be a lot cheaper for you guys to, to get it from nuclear bar, uh, just because Australia is a, a very expensive country and uh, it costs quite a lot of money for us to, to post out our Unfortunately, the shipping price um, from Australia is quite expensive. Um, Excuse me. Find more questions. Probably got about ten more minutes. Chat for so if you've got any questions, last minute questions, just send them through. Uh, I do have here. Do I play any instruments besides drums? No, unfortunately, I don't. I tried learning guitar at one point, but uh, I sucked. What albums are spinning on my iPod? Uh, the, uh, the latest Misery Index album that's on repeat that's probably one of the best uh, I guess you could call it extreme metal albums um, in the last 10 years um, it kind of it takes off from where Dying Fetus has destroyed the opposition um, left off from so if you haven't got it get the latest Misery Index album it's, it's unreal uh, other than that uh, Goat Whore Burl Attack, Immolation, uh, and then when I'm jogging in the morning, I listen to ambient stuff um, like Dead Can Dance or uh, Burz or something like that. Um, do, do I think we've reached the potential as a band, or is there always something more to strive for? There's always something more to strive for. Um, if there wasn't, we wouldn't continue. So, yeah, we can always push it. We can always do new and different things. Um, there's still a heap of places that we haven't been as a band and played live that I'd love to go to. Um, there's still a lot of things musically we can do. Um, so, yeah, we've got, we've got heaps more. Heaps more to go. Um, okay, so I've got about five minutes left. Are there any metal festivals? Um, I'd like to play. Um, yeah, uh, I'd really love to do uh, the 7,000 tons of metal cruise. That that sounds like an awesome time. Um, uh, of course, playing fest the European festivals is always great. Uh, there's heaps of festivals there that we haven't played. Um, Whacking. Um, uh, metal camp. And then you've got you know your download festival from the UK, Bloodstock. There's heaps, there's heaps. I'd really like to play Soundwave here in Australia. Uh, that's great. It's a huge metal festival. Um, and, uh, yeah, lots of festivals. Um, we we love playing it. So if there's a festival we haven't played, then uh, we'd love to do it. Uh, a couple more questions, and then I've got a bail. Uh, Favorite bands we've toured with? Um, Black Daly Murder, those guys are awesome, um, and good friends of ours, um, Cephalic Carnage, the same, they're awesome guys, had great times touring with them, touring with Dismember was awesome, uh, touring with Cannibal Corpse, you know, it's a, a dream come true, um, and then, you know, our touring with our friends in like Silosis, or touring the Amenta, Discarnate, that was, that was killer. Um, Keep of Khaleesi. Just about every band we've toured with, we've, we've loved it. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to pinpoint the favourite band. Um, probably the most memorable tour we've done thus far was, was the Summer Slaughter in, in the US because it was uh, huge crowds every day. 
heaps of cool bands to hang out with, party with. Um, yeah, but we're we're always looking forward to the next tour and the next band to hang out with and have a good time with. Um, what do I think about the popularity of the so-called degent style these days? Um, Calling it degent doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it's like calling a style of music to bang. You know, the sound a drum makes. It's it's, oh, it's lost on me. Um, you know, there's some cool bands that are so doing this so-called style, but it's nothing that Sugar weren't doing ten years ago, um, and it definitely isn't. A, doesn't need a name like Degent. Um, just call it heavy music. You know, if you want to call it something, just call it metal. Or call it heavy. Um, but calling it the sound of a guitar riff, it's a little bit... I don't know. Maybe I'm just too old and don't get it, but uh, it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, what genre would I put Psychroptic in? Is a, uh, another question. That's not for me to judge, that's for you guys. Um, I don't have any idea. Uh, we just play extreme metal, I guess, or metal, um, or heavy music, whatever you want to call it. Um, so a couple more questions. Uh, if I was stuck somewhere and could only listen to three albums, what, what, what would they be? Probably... Um, Battles in the North by Immortal, uh, The Inexorable by Angel Corpse, and let's just say uh, Ride the Lightning by Metallica. Uh, but you ask me tomorrow and the albums will change. Um, another question, any triggers other than my bass drums? No, I only trigger my bass drums. Um, I don't like the sound of triggers on any anything else but bass drum. But, um, everything else is natural. Uh, if anyone wants to shoot a last question in, they can, but uh, other than that, I'll have to, uh, have to head off and take care of uh, day-to-day business. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for tuning in and watching me fumble my way through the live chat, blabbering on. Um, so, uh, I'll just wait for the, the one last question. It would be very embarrassing if no one sends it through. Uh, my internet not but, uh, yeah, in closing, uh, we'll be touring Europe as of, uh, we start next Friday with a month-long tour with origin so uh, for all the European fans out there make sure you come along um, and the last question is is it expensive touring America uh, yes yes very very expensive uh, before we even play one night we uh, we're up for probably about 15 twenty thousand um, dollars before we before we even got there, so very expensive. But uh, yeah, we we want to uh, we want to come back as soon as we can. Cool. Well, that's it from me. Thanks very much for everyone for uh, sending the questions in and uh, being interested in Psychropic. Uh Check out the new album when it comes out. A couple of weeks. Pre-order it now from uh, Nuclear Blast or in the next couple of days from uh, psychroptic.com. Thanks, guys.